Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Happy Friday, happy makeup day. Today, I have gone perusing in the drugstores, my good people. I wanted to see what was new and hopping at the drugstore. I'm currently on a journey of trying to find some drugstore dupes for some of my favorite high-end products, and I wanted to do a proper dedicated video to a drugstore and more affordable end of the spectrum makeup looks. So that's what we're doing today. A few exciting new things that I've picked up, a few things that I've been testing, and obviously some TikTok inspired purchases are to be expected in this video. Just gonna turn this face into a less grubby version, play with some new stuff, play with some old fades from the drugstore, and hopefully we'll get a lovely makeup look at the end of it. So if you like seeing these makeup videos, like seeing these makeup tutorials and play times with makeup, do give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos from me. And as always, if there are any specific dedicated videos that you wanna see me do, if there are any specific brands from the drugstore you want me to review, any specific products, or if there are any looks that you want me to attempt to recreate, always let me know in the comments down below, guys. And without further ado, I will zoom you in. I'm gonna put my hair back in its little hair mop and we will get this party started. Yeehaw. I've recently accepted that my head is far too large for traditional headbands that exist for females and it just squishes my head into oblivion. And now I need just the adjustable little skincare headbands to film these videos with. <laughs> okay, so I actually wanted to start with the brows and this is technically not a makeup product, but I'm gonna use my got to be spiking glue because in my humbile opinion it is just the best dupe for any brow gel that you could possibly find on the market and i wanted to do this on a a clean face before we go in with anything else just so i can fully slick the brows back like really press them into my skin and get that cowlick feathered brow pop in you know <laughs> ah this always makes me giggle it always gives me a giggle looking at a, a freshly licked brow <laughs> I'm gonna like, I don't know, should I like fan these dry? I was really excited because I saw that L'Oreal had a micro ink pen, the Brow Stylist Micro Ink Pen. And this looks like, looks like it could be a dupe. Oh, ugh, no. Okay, almost. I feel like one could assume that this would be a great dupe for the Benefit Brow Micro Filling Pen, but I just wanna show you guys the difference in the pen heads here. So see how much more thin the Benefit one is? Is that showing? Mm -hmm. The L'Oreal one's like really thick. The Benefit one is like quite thin with the little prongs. So I wonder, I wonder how this is going to apply, but I wanted to try it anyway. That's why I wanted to start with my brows. So first thing, I don't wanna just, <laughs> I don't wanna go in and create a Sharpie brow. I just wanna see how this, okay. I kind of like that you can like flatten it here and then go in and draw like individual hairs with the tip. That's an exciting prospect. And it also looks like a good amount of product is coming out. So let's, <laughs> let's test it guys. Okay, so right away, because the benefits like three prongs are quite long, it really nicely like glides into the brow because this one doesn't actually have any of the prongs like very spaced out. It kind of draws a line and then just stops. So I think I'll just have to like take the tip and go in and draw it like this, but it's quite a warm shade and it's dispensing quite a bit of product, honestly, which is good because sometimes the problem is that you're not getting enough product with these. But yeah, I just feel like I have a really hard line right there. And it's quite warm. Warmer than I would usually do in my very cool toned brows. Let's try the other side. We've got two very different brow looks going on here today. No, well, that's okay because it's for science. It was for science. And now we're just gonna be rolling with some pretty intense brows, but hopefully as we go forth and do the rest of the face, it'll look a little less crazy, but what do you guys think of those brow products? Let me know. Now recently I decided to put some of the drugstore like pore filling primers to the test just because I had such success and joy with Gucci Beauty. Someone pointed out the fact that I don't normally use them and I was like, you're right, I should test more of this out even though I really just in general, the reason why I don't use pore filling primers or that just kind of arena of primers is I just don't like that slippy feeling, it's weird. It's like when your skin gets really pruney from being in the water too long and you just have that horrible weird layer feeling on your fingers, that's the feeling and the weird like butt 
squeeze feeling that I get when I use like a silicone primer. And that's usually been the reason why I've just generally stayed away from them. But it was a great point and I did put these two primers to the test the other day. It was the L'Oreal Infallible Pore Refining Primer and the NYX Pore Filler. This one had a lovely feeling. It spit out and went all weird on my hand when I first like pumped it out. You really had to like shake it up good and then give it a first few pumps to get the weird liquidy bits out of the way. At least that was my experience with it. And then it was a really nice feeling. Like it just felt like a hydrating cream. It went on, it looked nice. And then I used the NYX Pore Filler Primer. And this one had that slippy, silicone-y, slimy feeling. But I will say that from the initial look of how the pores looked and then the lasting power throughout the day, this one took the cake between the two. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of this. Oh, I hate it already. Oh, oh the pore filling primer. I hate this consistency. Ah! But I'm gonna rub this between my fingers and I'm just gonna place that right into the, just like just very specifically on the area where my pores are really bad. And you can see how it just has an instant, <laughs> instant smoothing effect. So even though I despise the feeling of this, I am willing to give it a try just because my, yeah, my pores have been, they've been acting up, acting up guys. Yeah, honestly, I really enjoyed the feeling of this primer. I didn't get any crazy rash or breakout, which is a plus and an exciting moment for me <laughs> in, in makeup. If you guys have any favorite or specific primers, definitely let us know in the comments down below. And if you've tried this NYX one, holler at me. Was it as effective for you as it was for me? I'm gonna spray the e.l.f. Hydrating Coconut Mist just to give this a layer on my face. And I'm actually just gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna go straight into foundation. I have really, really been loving the Maybelline Dream Radiant Liquid Foundation. This has been such a beautiful everyday foundation in my collection. I have worn it so much since my recent rediscovery. I know I had actually used it in the past, but it had been so long. It was just like a really true rediscovery and it's been beautiful. So I'm using the shade 20 classic ivory and I'm just gonna take my Real Techniques sponge and give it a little spritz with the e.l.f. hydrating mist as well. And then I'll go ahead and apply the foundation with the sponge. Like how pretty is that foundation? It's just such an ideal light lovely, nothing there, looks like your skin, beautiful foundation, but it's also buildable. It's truly been a joy. And I'm actually gonna stop the face there. I wanna go ahead and do the eyes just in case. I am testing out some new eyeshadow palettes, so if they happen to have a lot of fallout, I don't wanna like perfect the base and the skin and the under eye and then screw it all up for myself. So we're just gonna leave it there at a nice layer and let's head in and do the eyes. I picked up the Revlon Color Stay Cream Eyeshadow in the shade Espresso. Lovely, lovely little deep brown here. I feel like we've been using a lot of one and done eyeshadows. I see you guys, those of you who are requesting the one and done eyeshadow. I know Karima <laughs> tagged me in the video. I've been meaning to do it, truly. Someday it will happen and I will deliver unto you the one and done eyeshadows. To be honest, I don't know why. I don't know why it's taking me so long. I think I'm stressed about it because I know there's gonna be something I'm gonna miss. There's gonna be some shade I'm gonna miss. Love me a one and done easy eyeshadow and this seems to be it right off the bat. I guess it is exactly what it looks like. It is not as like warm and espresso-y as I thought it might be. It's definitely leaning more towards the taupe, cool toned edge of the makeup world. And it also seems to have some like little silver glitters in it, which is totally pretty. It is definitely a look. It's just not, not really what I was expecting here, but it's pretty, it's very creamy and applying really easily. I love it when things are easy. I'm just gonna take a clean brush and I like to just go over it and you know, we can always clean this up with concealer after, but I think because it is more on the gray end, I'm not going to put it on my lower lash line. I do want something a little bit warmer down there just to avoid me looking like I have gone and bruised my eyes. And so I'm gonna leave that there as a base. There were a few new eyeshadow palettes from Revlon, or at least they were in the center new section. I don't know how new these actually were. They were new to my eyes. And these are the So Fierce palettes. I actually ended up picking up three of these. This lovely little mermaid blue in there. So pretty. I do think, however, I'm going to use this palette with the warm tones. Maybe we'll give them a little swatch first. I'm, I was very intrigued by the pattern and everything. It's like little waves, you see? 
Wow, see, that's the kind of warm brown I'm looking for. Look how pretty, look how pigmented that is. Holy, let's swatch this little taupey one beside it. There's the pilot swatch. This like coral salmon pink was a lot more light than I was expecting it from this palette, but they're very pretty. Let's just swatch the mermaid color. I'm so curious. <laughs> oh, wow. <gasps> oh my God. It totally goes like in and out of blue and purple and a little green in there. That's so pretty. Wow, I'm very impressed. Very impressed with the color payoff there. Let's go ahead and use this palette. This one is the shade 965 Tantrum. I'm gonna take that deep warmer brown and just take that on the lower lash line. Yeah, it's just a little bit warmer there on the eyes. It's a little bit more welcoming on my face, I feel. <laughs> And I'm just gonna take a little bit of that on a fluffy brush. And I just wanna go over that cream eyeshadow base that we've put down and just make it a bit more chocolatey. Those layer really nicely together. And then again, I'm just gonna take that clean blending brush and just soften the edges here. And what I might do quick, actually, just to give us a little guideline, I'm gonna take my Maybelline Fit Me Concealer, which will be the concealer I'm going to use in a bit. I just wanna take a little flat shader brush and clean up this bottom a little bit, just kind of creating a line that I, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> just creating a little line with the concealer to help shape where we're gonna put the eyeliner after and just clean up anything that is under it. If I start incorporating this more in my life, it'll be a lot easier for me to map out my liner because I often have wings that do not equal one another and maybe doing this beforehand more often in a more significant way like this will help to avoid that issue. I can make them a little bit more even and maybe I'm just blind. Maybe this isn't even at all, but at least we tried. I'm just gonna take a little finger dip of that lovely little coral shade and just pop that right in the center for a little interest, a little pink interest. Kind of cute. Makes it a little bit more multi-dimensional. Really, really pretty palettes. I'm not going to use that. I don't want a straight silver on my eye. So maybe I will use this shade from the palette Fully Loaded for a little bit more of a gold, champagne -y gold highlight. The next product I picked up, this is the L'Oreal Super Slim Liquid Eyeliner. And I got this in the shade brown in the hopes that it would be similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Feline Flick brown liner that we've recently discovered and been loving here on this channel. So let's give it a whirl. Let's do some liner. I'm gonna trace my lash line. And then I'm just gonna attempt to connect. Ah, <laughs> that wasn't so bad. Connect with the line that we drew with the concealer. I know this is the first use and I'll have to see how long it will be until it dries up and gets goopy on me if it does, but that was very easy application. It's definitely not as um, warm brown as the Charlotte Tilbury one is, but it is brown and so it's just not as intense as a black liner, but it's definitely a lot deeper. A lot more of a cool toned brown feel to it. It's starting to get a little bit choppy. Like when the product just kind of starts sputtering out and it's not as clean. Well, let's just go ahead and actually finish the eyes then. Let's do mascara. I've seen this mascara all over TikTok. <laughs> so many people have been trying this out and it looks like they just get the most insane long lashes. This is the Maybelline Lash Sensational Sky High Mascara. I like the packaging, very cute. And it's got a plastic wand, which I don't normally like so much, but they look to be like much shorter and more round. They look less sharp, so hopefully we won't stab any eyeballs out. And let's see how this mascara applies. It's got a really, like, it's a bendy wand and it's really soft. So I find myself not being able to like press and wiggle the mascara in, if you know what I mean. Like I, I like my wand to be a little bit less flexible so I can really 
control it with my hand because when it's soft you're not able to like get in there and wiggle without like <laughs> flipping onto your lid <laughs> it's not my favorite looking mascara i've ever used ah yeah i just don't i don't know how to explain this but i don't like this mascara how can i how can i explain it okay because it has like a wiggly wobbly wand you're not able to like grip and pull, like have a nice taut tug on the lashes to pull out any clumps. So what I found is that as I'm building each layer, they're just kind of little balls of clumps throughout the hairs that because the wand is so bendy and soft, I'm not able to just like pull the product through. Whereas if you have a little bit more of a tough taut wand, you're able to like pull those clumps away does that make sense so yeah it's like super lifting it's nice i just find that it just looks a little bit more clumpy and a little bit more odd if someone has better wording for what i've just explained feel free to please let us know but that's the look of the mascara what do you guys think does this match up to the tiktok claim to fame i'm gonna leave the eyes there for now let's go back to the face let's head back into the concealer maybelline fit me concealer one of my all-time favorites tried and true always from the drugstore this one's in the shade 15 i'm gonna do a little highlighting concealer with this i love how the base looks i feel like that primer is doing some magic on my pores here yeah we're just very nicely covered so i'm just gonna take a little extra bit of this i don't really know what shape i was going for there but i'm gonna take my sponge and just blend that out then for contour, I've picked up a few options. I'm still on the hunt for some drugstore contour dupes. Again, it's been pretty pretty slim pickings in the Canadian drugstore, but I did find three options. Two of them are foundations. We have the Maybelline Fit Me foundation and the L'Oreal Infallible Stick. I got these in the two deeper shades. Then I also picked up the L'Oreal Infallible Concealer in a deeper shade. This one's a little bit more warm. Looks like it could be a little bit more close to the the Tom Ford Creamy Life. So I'm gonna be giving these a little testy test. Let's do the concealer. I'm scared because it's like full wear, like full coverage. I'm like, oh God, is this gonna blend out? I'm gonna start with a very small amount. We're going to very softly blend this out onto the cheeks. Yeah, that is... She pigmented. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. It always gets stuck in my sideburns here, man. Always, everything. <laughs> Not a bad color, guys. Not a bad color at all. And I'm using the tiniest little amount. I'm not gonna lie, it's like pretty tough. Like it's definitely more of a matte finish. It's pretty tough to blend <laughs> out. Like this is, <laughs> it's just being a lot more tough to blend out. <sighs> like that looks, that looks pretty intense for sure. Mm, I don't know how I feel about this. I think it's too, 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 too pigmented. Like, this is gonna take a lot of, a lot of blending out with some other products. <laughs> but the idea was there. The idea was there. I'm just gonna leave that for now, and I'm gonna switch to a bronzer. I picked up the L'Oreal Back to Bronze bronzer. I do love the L'Oreal bronzers. I have one that I think I got two summers ago that I love so much. It's in a much bigger packaging, which they usually bring out like a different variation of it each summer. The one I had in particular, I just really love the shade of, but this one seemed to be a more consistent product that existed on the shelf. This is O2 Sunkiss. So I'm gonna take this with a brush and attempt to smooth out what we've done here. Like it's not bad. It's definitely just like a lot deeper than my skin tone. Like when I do this, I'm gonna have to go ahead and like put this on my and yeah, that, that concealer in particular was just really difficult to blend out. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and smooth the rest out with a powder bronzer. I'm gonna take a little bit of this down my nose as well. I'm gonna take our big fluffy brush and just do the, the good old Jamie Genevieve style and dip into the bronzer and just use that to lightly go over our eyeshadow and kind of diffuse a little bit of that warmth in there, especially because we were using much more cool tones on our eye. It's kind of just a nice way to soften it up with some warmth here. 
that is such a, a game-changing tip <laughs> for eyeshadow for me it's been anyway Jamie Genevieve knows what's up big difference love that okay let's move on to highlight let's ignore that we've just we're very bronzed we're very very bronzed this is a very suitable summertime look let me use the Milani number three sun glow strobe light highlight I like the looks of this one Ooh. it's like quite quite glittery quite glittery but it is popping for sure for sure for sure there's a little bit on my nose yeah I really like that color very much reminds me of Mac Whisper of Guilt like just that true lovely gold very nice you guys may or may not have seen I did recently pick up the Milani Luminoso blush I hadn't had this in my collection for so long but this was such a YouTube favorite for so long so I wanted to wanted to bring it back to my stacks bring this lovely peachy flush yeah, it's really pretty. It's so light, like there's not a lot of pigment. It's almost just like more in the glow, which if you're trying to hide your pores, isn't always the best thing. But because we did use that pore filling primer, we're pore knowing people now. I don't mind it. Yeah. I'm just gonna do this all day. Okay, for lip liner, I'm gonna use the Maybelline Shaping Lip Liner in the shade 130. Dusty Rose. I don't know if I'm gonna like this one actually. We'll see. I'm gonna use this Dusty Rose and line my lips. I love it when products are twist up. I love it when you don't have to use a pencil sharpener. It just makes your makeup upkeep and application so much easier and so much more swift. But then it also sucks because when a product gets a little bit dry, it is much more likely to just like fall out <laughs> if it's the, the twist up and not the pencil. Mm. I really like that color actually. That's really nice. I picked up two of these Rimmel glosses. These are just the Stay Glossy glosses. Maybe we'll just try both. It's bare minimum, this one here, and this is Nonstop Glamour. I thought this one reminded me of those like KKW Beauty glosses, the Maybelline Lifter glosses, that kind of nice solid color. Oh yeah, that's really pretty. Oh, it goes so nicely with that lip liner. And then I don't normally like to put glitter on my face at all, really, unless it's an eyeshadow topper, but I've kind of been enjoying that little glittery bit. Just, just for extra interest in the center of the lip. A little extra juicy juice, bringing out the juicy scale, you know? Those are pretty, pretty glosses. Very like, feels like a classic gloss. If that makes sense. Okay, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, that completes this video guys. That is everything for this makeup look. A lovely little very extra bronzy glowing. This is like soft glam, a little soft glam makeup for you and all of the makeup options were affordable from the drugstore. I wanted to see what was new and happening and dipping into a few old faves. So let me know in the comments down below any other products that you guys want me to try from the drugstore. If there's anything on your radar, let a girl know. Let me know what you think of this makeup look. I hope that you're all having a beautiful day or night wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much as always for watching and I'll see you all very soon for a new video. Bye!